Guests today are uh, Ferenc Groff of uh, Société Realiste and uh, Jonas Stahl. Um, we do the conversation in English. It will be recorded. Um, I suggest that we have a, a talk amongst us three for about a half an hour, 30 minutes. Okay. And the last 15 minutes, um, I will invite you, if you have any questions or remarks or whatever, uh, towards the artist. And um, please then stand up and we give you a handout because then that all will also will be part of the recording. Okay? Uh, my name is Edwin Jacobs. Um, I'm happy to work here as the director of the Central Museum. Uh, this is the new Central Museum. And um, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the performance. A beautiful acoustic situation, I think. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks, uh, thanks uh, for uh, uh, helping us to happen it uh -huh. here as well in the, uh, in, in the museum. Uh -huh. Oh, it was a great experience today, you know, like the, uh, uh, to work with the uh, this wonderful, wonderful people, first uh, of uh, Bach and the musicians, so really, Thanks for all of, all of you to make yeah. it happen. No, of course. And uh, yeah, we had like uh, four uh, performances. The first one just next to the dome, Don Don Plain, right? Yeah, Don Plain, yeah. And then in the, in the center of the city, in a very uh, busy uh, uh, corner. And then at the archive, and here uh, it was the last stop. Okay, so we have four yeah. performances today. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And is it, is it for you important um, the place where you perform this work? Or is it more? Uh, yeah, of course, it's, it's always a good option if there is a, a, a good location. The very first time when we performed it uh, three years ago, it was in, the, uh, in, uh, in uh, Cluj in Romania, uh, the uh, uh, transit gallery space. So it was really like a white box situation. Mm -hmm. So we had an exhibition. We showed the uh, original scores of this, of this work. And then the, uh, the uh, local musicians came to, uh, to perf perform it. And for example, there it was very important that the uh, uh, so Cluj is still a, a, a mixed city. I mean, uh, like uh, Romanians, Hungarians living together. Uh, and uh, the orchestra was a, a mixed orchestra as well. So we, uh, it, was, it was nice because the, uh, you know, the, uh, the score that is uh, projected here, it's yes, a pure, it's pure product yes. of, uh, of a software. Yeah. So unplayable by humans. So we need like the, uh, the work of uh, uh, composers, conductors, and of course musicians to 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 make it um, uh, to uh, to hear it uh, yeah. in 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 a live situation, and then in uh, last year we uh, we could organize a, a concert in Budapest mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, off biennial, which is already a, a, a kind of a a, a quite a big uh, um, cultural event. Uh, against the uh, uh, the politics of the government yes. of the uh, uh, current go government in Hungary, mm -hmm. and we could make the uh, performance just next to the monument, which was installed by this uh, uh, um, uh, quite unfamous go government um, in the c center of, of the city, uh, a monument dedicated to the victims of the Second World War, a very uh, very very controversial monument, which. Um, um, Anyway, so it was a very important uh, uh, yeah. location for uh, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the reason um, to perform it in Utrecht? It, uh, it, it came as an uh, invitation from uh, uh, Maria, yeah. who, uh, who came to Budapest to the, uh, to, uh, 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 last year. And in the, uh, first of all, it was shown as a um, um, kind of sound installation at the uh, unstated uh, exhibition yeah. there. Yeah. And, it, uh, and then it came the invitation for the 1st of May. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because it, um, that Bach took the initiative for a, a larger program with exhibitions and yeah. talks and activities, um, even um, a research program called Unstated. And uh, Jonas, you're also a participant in this uh, program. Um, of course, with your program, your artistic, your artistic program of uh, how do you what is it called the um, the status democracy as a part of it, and also your work. Uh, do you know each other? Yes. 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 <laughs> Tell me about it. 
Did you did yeah. you cooperate it or was it purely the uh, accident? Uh, we were in an exhibition together first time in Paris, I think, with yeah, the, yeah. It's called the Art yeah. Foundation yeah. in an acting populism okay. exhibition. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, oh yeah, the populism. And this is the first time you, you, you met and then also worked together? Not so much work together, but regularly yeah. exchanged. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and we, we, may, we meet uh, quite, quite often, let's say. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but do, do it's important to have uh, the background of the initiative as from Bach, uh, in which we literally can interpret your work. That's very important. So, I and for you, it's important to be part of that um, program, um, but also related to your, um, let's say, artistic domain, um, statelessness, identity, uh, refugees are very, very strong topics in your work now. Can you, can, you tell me, can you tell us about that a bit? About the context of the exhibition in yes. which we're both participating? Yes, but also your, your, personal, your personal artistic domain. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about politics. It's about now, um, in the context of a longer um, program at Buck about refugees, statelessness and identity. Yes, I mean, I think for, for me as an artist, one of the questions that I work with is what is the role of art in um, representing alternative models of politics and alternative models of um, democratic assembly. So when we think of, uh, of politics, I think politics also has a very strong visual aspect. If we look at our parliaments, they are essentially theaters and also within uh, European history, the history of the theater and the history of the parliament, the history of the tragedy and the history of politics are very strongly interrelated. Connected. Which means that um, when we think about politics, when we think about power, there's always an element of, of uh, the image that is part of it. Yes. There are architects and designers and artists who have created um, the, the centers that we consider centers of political power. So that also means that if we as artists have the power to imagine um, the capacity to imagine how power manifests, uh, it means we can also choose uh, what kind of power we want manifest. And I think today, if we look at the context of the European continent, European Union in particular, we're facing a whole series of crises, political mm -hmm. crises, the rise of ultranationalism, blatant fascism, if we talk about Hungary or Poland, and um, fascism on the rise from the Netherlands to, to France. We're dealing with an economic crisis, and our friends in Greece were the first to go fully down uh, in it, which is the product of fundamentally undemocratic mechanisms within the European Union. We're dealing with a humanitarian crisis with hundreds of thousands of refugees trying to gain uh, recognition and rights to citizenship, a promise once uh, defended by the idea of the European Union, that it would be a union that would secure universal human rights, etc., etc. But obviously it's not capable of doing so because of um, uh, uh, separatist interests of its different uh, member states. So I think that we're dealing with, it in a, with, a, with a time frame in which uh, the role of art in imagining a different union, a different political union, a different political imaginary is really, is really um, crucial. Mm. Okay. And for me, I think the exhibition in Bach, the unstated exhibition um, to which the Societe Realis is also a part, part of and of, in, of which my organization, New World Summit, is a part, is an attempt to start to reimagine um, new unions. Mm. Do you recognize these topics of Jonas? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So the, so one of the. Um, is it also you know, per, your personal? Is it also per, your personal um, thing in your artistic domain? Because you know, um, for that reason, I ask for the artistic domain because it's about art yeah. and artists. You know, you're addressing something which you know it's not a politician. You are an artist. So is there is there something in the same um, era in the same uh, uh, specter of thinking of Jonas that you recognize? Yeah, uh, uh, as, as let's say as a, as a political drive. Uh -huh. It's, it's uh, absolutely there. So to, to, to talk about all these uh, contradictions and uh, the hypocrisy of the uh, uh, institutions, political institutions that we are that are uh, uh, creating uh, our uh, 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 political sphere right now, from the European Union to the uh, more local ones, so the nation states uh, to the uh, even uh, uh, city governments, mm -hmm. of course. And now we uh, we are we are in, in face of a, a, a quite uh, in, uh, uh, interesting oh. f phenomenon that the phenomenon that the uh, these more macro-political, macro-economical crises arrive to the very small 
local institutions as well, to the schools, hospitals, etc. Almost yeah. everywhere in, 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 in Europe for very different Defects reasons. Everyone, anyone. But, it's yeah. And uh, so it's it's uh, yeah 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 sure and uh, and uh, as, as artists we we have to be there uh -huh. so at, le at least what it, one either to give some tools or uh, to show some how to say how gaps to to get in and to to move further and mm -hmm. to, to 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 change things yeah. to change things you um, you are part of um, a couple a duo but not yeah. longer a duo <laughs> yeah I got a... divorced yeah. <laughs> you got divorced <laughs> of a société réaliste yeah. Um, could you s tell us a bit more about the background of it? Is, is what is what's the what's the what's the situation in your um, artistic development? What's the meaning of it of the Société Réaliste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, um, Société Réaliste, we uh, uh, we started with Jean Baptiste Naudy uh, uh, in uh, 2004 in Paris as a as a duo, artist artist duo. Yeah. I uh, originally I'm, I'm uh, from uh, Hungary, from Budapest, and uh, so. Already from the very beginning, it was like a, a duo of uh, someone with a Eastern European background and a Western one. Yes, ah, right. And uh, the uh, uh, first, we uh, we wanted to work on the. Uh, that's why we ch uh, we have chosen this name, Societe Realiste. We wanted to work on the uh, heritage of uh, socialist realism. So it's a play word, uh, play with words in, in, in English. We uh, we just changed the change. order and uh, Societe, Societe, Society, yeah. Realist, uh, yeah, Realist. realist. And uh, so it was a, a, a work about that. So since the beginning, we, we were very much in, interested by the uh, triangulation of art, pol politics, ideology, how they interact with uh, each other. So, uh, um, so we, uh, we worked on, on several uh, uh, um, uh, research chapters, mm -hmm. uh, like concerning, uh, um, uh, yeah, how we called it, like uh, political design. So how you know, like flags, different kind of uh, political symbols uh, were constructed, how they uh, were implemented in in a in a in a special context, etc. It was uh, most like a, a kind of a deconstructive approach mm -hmm. uh, of uh, of work, just like with the uh, with this uh, universal anthem. Yes, as we see it here in the in the visual yeah. In effect. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, so it was like a very, uh, very different um, uh, chapters, you know, like the, uh, uh, the uh, um, how uh, uh, architecture is, uh, uh, you know, like uh, involved in this, uh, in this uh, very ideological processes, etc., etc., et to, yeah. to even to uh, typography. Yeah, that's, 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 I think that's a um, also a connection between you if you're talking about images. That connect mm. to politics, yeah. um, and you are talking about, for example, architecture and politics is also in the imaginary of, of yeah, but you can say that's related to art. That makes us also both of you, um, let's say, more specific, more specific artists with specific works. It's no longer painting. It's no longer photography. It's much more. Well, it's very. I mean, I think. From what I know from Societe Realist work, I think we're both interdisciplinary artists who believe that when you have to think about art or the image in relationship to politics, you always have to look at it in a kind of um, multifaceted way. Uh, let's say that, um, uh, for example, a concept like uh, propaganda, uh, it's never singular. It's no. never uh, simply the painting or the film that is a political or propagandistic work. It's always part of a larger network of distribution and just as that, for example, you mentioned the term architecture, but if I look at this partiture, I also see an architecture. I see an architecture of a composition that is both a musical composition, but is also an identitarian composition, because behind every one of these notes, there's the idea of a music, of a score that can somehow narrate uh, a sense of national unity, mm. the history of nation state, or the struggles of a nation state, or its um, uh, exclusive uh, nature or, or history. Um, and what I think is very interesting about, about this piece is that when you listen to it being performed, um, it, you, I mean, it's, not, it's no longer an anthem, obviously, no longer a singular it's anthem, because it's all of these anthems put together. But in this kind of like almost um, yeah, noise-like uh, soundscape, you do somehow hear each of them screaming yes. for their claim. Like you hear this kind of like it is this yeah this this soundscape in which all of the states are still somehow emerging one after another in competition. So it's it's almost as if there is a kind of universalist um, scheme 
behind the idea of the of the anthem. There's always this kind of pompous, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and you kind of hear that throughout. The the, but when you put them all of them together, they also become completely dysfunctional because true, yeah. they no longer represent anything. Yeah. The only thing that's universal about the universal anthem, in my experience, but yes. it's your piece, so you'd say, in my experience, is that um, is 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 this kind of yeah this this kind of pompous rhythm of the nation. Um, and 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 it's in, and the inca and it and it shows especially at the time of the kind of European crisis where we are now, the incapacity to think of the different member states in a kind of solidary union. Yes. In some way, it also, in, in this time frame, ex um, it's a kind of example of the incapacity to come to an imaginary of a collective um, cultural sphere. So I think it's very it's very interesting. It's like it shows similarities and at the same time the incapacity to think of unity. I must um, interesting because I, when I look at the visual and I, you know, I heard it, the beginning was you know, like a soundscape, but it ended in a way very um, open. Um, and even if you look at this, you can experience a kind of the same thing. It's li literally full in the beginning and at the end um, it's, it's open. Even in individual score of, 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 of Music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there's a few that are just simply longer. No? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, longer, they yeah. all start at the same time, but yeah, there's always yeah, yeah. one yeah. anthem that is the yeah. longest, so you will hear it. Yeah, yeah. But you had a, but, uh, something about the process, because um, it's made by a computer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 why, why did you, because you, you, in the beginning you explained it's very important for you to have people, musicians, uh, to perform it, very important. Of course, also the scene, uh, the place where, uh, the context, but you, in my opinion, it's a bit contrary that you use something very, 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 very objective. Um, but I can be wrong. But no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so for, first of all, it, it comes from the fact that uh, uh, both of us were completely analphabet, analphabets in music. So, uh -huh. but yeah, it's kind of a joke. But the uh, uh, just just coming back from uh, to your, your previous uh, question about the uh, the more traditional techniques, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, for, for us, first. Thanks for this architectural uh, metaphor, but first for, for us it was more like sculpture, really like mm. a sculpture thing, you know, how to amalgamate, to make an amalgam, uh, so how to melt things together. So yeah. it's, the, it's calculating average, how you force it, you know, together. So it's more like a, a sculptural approach to, to music, let's say, for, uh, from, from an alphabet yeah. like, like, uh, like me or like us. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the process was that the, uh, uh, first of all, you know, like the uh, the uh, to to calculate the average of 193 national anthems, where in almost every anthem you've got around uh, 12 uh, instruments, it gives you because we calculated the average for every instrument first, so it gives you a huge data. Uh -huh. It's a huge data, like uh, because the uh, you have to calculate all the, all the first notes of the trumpet, like you like one of the dom dominant. Uh, uh, instruments of the of these very pompous, you know, like uh, marches, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mili uh, these are military, military marches, yes, yeah. uh, uh, basically. With some, uh, um, there are some which are not really military marches, but most of them they are. Uh, so the uh, so it's only a computer who can calculate the p the average of uh, pitch and the duration. So uh -huh. these are the two two numbers which uh, no interpretation uh, yeah 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 so and 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 you know averaging is one is a very basic you know like banal uh, mathematical uh, uh, method and um, you, yeah of course we could you know calculate all these but it would take like you know like i don't know two years to to make that and uh, even 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 with this it was uh, quite difficult you know like to decorticate all the all the anthems yeah. put together all the trumpets all yeah. the uh, symbols Etc. Etc. Yeah. You know, I, I just put the question, because, uh, the idea of, um, let's say, the more uh, conventional mediums on the table. Because as a museum director, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's also always the first uh, reference in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, the medium. The medium. Yeah, in a way, it's an interesting thing. So, but and yeah. we experienced it uh, last year because uh, you made an exhibition. It was also part of the cooperation with Buck um, in in the Central Museum, and for us it was a real, real um, strong experiment. Also, by acquiring the work, you know, mm. so it was not only making an exhibition in forms of performing, but also how can the museum act on the fact that it will stay. Uh, that's an interesting thing, but um, 
We would maybe we come back on that later. Mm -hmm. on that well, maybe also, I mean, when you look at this partiture, how would you relate to this in terms of if you would acquire this piece? Yes. What What do you think you acquire, and where would you categorize it? Probably, I would acquire it in the fact of the performance, and that you literally that we make um, a contract <laughs> 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 on saying uh, we need to have, let's say, five till ten times the performance in a specific way. Um, and the first question is always, as we also discussed, to, to be completely concrete, that um, suppose someone else wants to lend the work. So what does, does he get? So that's a, <laughs> it's an abstract way, what is, what is, but that's the realistic aspect yeah. of uh, acquiring. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. All these questions, it, it, it shows a little bit all the all the all this absurd side of yes. the of the uh, because now we are talking about very, almost like in uh, art market terms. Yeah. Actually, so where is yeah. the artwork? Where is so the artwork? The, yeah. the very first galleries we work with, you know, like ask ask this question. Yeah, okay, I I I love the show, but which is the artwork? Yeah. No, but that's the no, no, to, but it, to move. Yeah. But. No, but in in the fact that no, well, that's the interesting thing is not only that. In yeah, my yeah, sure, opinion, sure, sure. no, no, not in, in my opinion. That's the interesting thing about it that you don't that you also have uh, uh, that you also take a new step in interpreting art, you know, as an artist. So it's not only literally. It's a, um, when art um, performs, and then you have the medium, the, the, the painting or the sculpture, but also a new era of interpreting art. And as you say, it's a manifestation. Or you look around, you take a you take a step, you take a position. This is also a part of taking a position. So that's a new way of looking at art and the artist. I think. For and, also, and also, it has to do with the expanding capacity of an artwork. Because, for example, if let's say you acquire this piece, and tomorrow the Basque Country becomes independent, then there's the question: Do you keep the piece as it is, as, or do you yeah. add? Do you yeah. add an, an anthem? Yeah. I mean, that's one question. And another question is, what is the work? Like, is the what? work its performers? It performance is the work its performers? Because you could imagine that a performance of this piece with um, musicians that are uh, part of each of the member states of which the anthems are being played, then the performance also includes it's the representation of these people, like yes. the citizens of the anthems. Yeah. True. That's different than having uh, an orchestra from the Netherlands perform it. That has, I mean, each of these, like the, from the performance to the place where you perform and the time frame in which you perform it, depending on how many new nation states or old nation states have disappeared, mm. all of these impact um, the capacity, like the, the quality of, like not the quality of the work, but the way the work the way performs the work. itself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You have to rethink that too. Yes. yes. And also in terms of uh, collecting, what the meaning is, you know. Um, but uh, Jonas, um, uh, stateless, uh, an exhibition. Um, you have for us uh, some images, some illustrations of your latest project, which is now uh, part in display in, at Bach. Um, please, could you tell us about your latest performance, your latest work, um, which also attended a lot of press? Well, I mean, in, this is the um, project that we're talking about a work by an artistic and political organization that I founded in 2012, the New World Summit, that develops um, uh, parliaments for stateless and blacklisted political organizations from all over the world. And uh, currently we are working in um, the Kurdish part of Syria, known as Rojava, it's the northern part of Syria that you see here in uh, yellow. Mm -hmm. um, the Kurds in this region, when the Syrian war started, um, declared themselves independent. They separated from the Assad uh, regime are in a difficult geopolitical situation, like on the northern part of this uh, yellow part of land you see the Turkish regime, in red is the Assad regime, in black is the Islamic State or Daesh, so it's Daesh. a very conflicted region, but the region in yellow is relatively uh, well under control of the Kurdish uh, revolutionaries. And they uh, commissioned our organization to build a new uh, parliament, a parliament that would rep represent the ideals of what they call stateless democracy. Um, the Kurds do not want a in new independent nation state, uh, but they do claim that they want a democracy, but one that's based on uh, local self-governance. So the idea is that rather than having a centralized state in each of the different villages and cities, there are small assemblies that make decisions on day-to-day -day life. That explains the word stateless. 
that to explains the word stateless or the, the concept of stateless uh, democracy. So the commission was to build, uh, together with uh, peoples from the region and local government, the autonomous government, to build um, a new public parliament that would represent these ideas of a democracy but without the state. Hmm. So here the question becomes very concrete that we discussed earlier, what is the role of, what can be the role of art in imagining new political structures yeah. Yeah. And that operate as political structures but also challenge how we imagine um, the, 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 yeah, the representation of politics or of political autonomy uh, as such. So here you see the design of the, of the parliament. It's a public parliament, so it's literally the idea of the parliament as a public space, as a space of public assembly, um, in which there is no uh, central speaker, as you can see here. Like There's a kind of like central uh, closed arena for about 250 people. Mm -hmm. The assemblies are pretty much that size. There's not many more people than 250 in each of the self-governing assemblies. And on top of this, um, um, you see a series of arches that represent key ideas from this model of um, stateless democracy. So it's also a bit of a spatial manifesto, like a manifesto in the form of architecture. And on the roof, you see uh, fragments of flags that belong to each of these local communes, each of these small self-governing communes. And if you stand in the middle of the parliament and you would look up, then we'll see you that. see how, they, in, how these fragments of flags connect into a kind of new confederation, a new assembly. It's very beautiful that the Kurds mm. have this, their symbols are very strongly, um, uh, there's like stars, uh, suns, uh, rainbows, there's, they, they are very, um, um, they have this universalist quality, which is why I thought it was also connected, interesting to the, to the anthem, mm -hmm. um, because they're both rooted in, well, let's say the stars, of course, also uh, a symbol of the socialist and Marxist socialist struggle of which the Kurds also come from. But they also have this kind of universalist capacity. If you look at the top of the parliament, it's almost like you have this ideological planetarium mm -hmm. that kind of surrounds you, that creates a that is the horizon of their new model of status democracy. And we started to uh, build the parliament together with the autonomous government uh, in August uh, last year. Yeah, and and sorry to interfere. You said you were commissioned. That's you were commissioned. Yes. Ha! Huh, by whom? In fact, you know, if you have, was it a person or? A, a group or what happened? Uh, by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the autonomous region of Rojava. That's okay. the autonomous Kurdish region, Amina Osa. So he recognized your... She. Uh, uh, she, excuse me. No worries. Uh, she uh, recognized your artistic um, quality or specific quality. Well, previously with the New World Summit, we developed temporally, temporal parliaments in theaters, public spaces. So we created this kind of architectural constructions that uh, look like parliaments, I mean function like parliaments, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not permanent. Um, and several representatives of the Kurdish movement participated to them. So they were aware of this work when they invited uh, me and my colleagues to come to this autonomous region. And there they did us the proposition, uh, could you now, instead of making a temporal parliament in the theater, think More. of a parliament that would actually have a permanent function for our new uh, political fantastic. project. Yes, yes, fantastic. Yes. So this, is, was the, this was the celebration of the start of the construction when the first arches were built, and, and this is the current state of the uh, parliament now. Yes, and um, you say it's, um, it's now a, a difficult moment there. It's, it's difficult to be there. Um, but how? Aleppo is like a few hundred kilometers. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. which were, so Aleppo, the city which was bombed like heavily during the last week, and I'm just imagine right now they are bombed, I think. Yes. So, but how, but that's, that I, would, I would imagine that that is something of a, a tension between your, uh, your meaning, you're giving your meaning at this place and actually what's the reality. How do you experience that? How do you mean? Now, you have your ideas, you have your um, ideological uh, goals, but also you are recognized by someone who asks you to do this work, um, but the real, the, the situation itself, um, it's not, you know, it's not safe, um, big difficulties. So how you do you experience that? Well, the, the Kurdish region, the, the, the region in yellow that I showed on the map is, is relatively, I mean, it is of course in a conflict yeah. zone, but it is relatively stable for uh, since the past years. The Kurds have been capable of defending their um, uh, autonomous region from attacks of, uh, of Islamic State and there are still front lines but within the region that they have under control they have been able to build um, civil society so they have been able to uh, create new schools 
uh, new local assemblies, local parliaments, okay. uh, alternative uh, uh, forms of cooperations, like economic cooperations. It's an agricultural region, so there's not big cities. It's very much, um, um, yeah, it has like a long agricultural history. So in that sense, it's relatively well capable of, of creating a self-sufficient system. Okay. It is less based on money and more based on, um, yeah, on, on co cooperation. And when it comes to our relationship of my organization as the ones uh, designing and uh, uh, constructing the parliament and uh, the autonomous region, um, we got the commission from the minister. Uh, but as I said, the, the political situation is that the real decisions are made by very small councils. So the minister can uh -huh. take an initiative, but she cannot yeah. decide that decide. it's going to be built. So after her propo proposal followed God knows how many meetings um, between us and the minister and all the local councils to decide um, where should this parliament come, uh, what should it, by who will it be used, uh, what, is the, what will be in the surrounding region. So we're building also a park around the parliament. So by the time that everything was designed and ready to go, it had the support it built the support of, uh, of all the local councils, otherwise you cannot do anything there. So in that sense, it's very much, like it's a collectively carried um, project. Yes. It's not us who are commissioned and then just put it there. It really takes a common effort in that sense. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But in the interesting, um, but maybe I, mm, I don't interpret in the right way, but if you say stateless, and then you organize something with a structure and organizing something being structured, are you not organizing a kind of a state? Well, I mean, it's like what it's what most anarchists will tell you that, like, um, when we speak about the history of anarchism, people always associate anarchism with chaos. Yeah. But especially like the history of anarcho-syndicalism, for example, is very much um, focused on the, the importance of organization. But to be organized or to have an administration is not necessarily the same as having a state. Huh. The state in terms of yes. a centralized structure of power, especially and a centralized structure of power that seeks for recognition of others. This is also quite important yeah. because once uh, one, become, one, one becomes a state by recognition of other states and that immediately implies that you're part of a larger geopolitical body and that immediately also takes away part of the sovereignty that you, that you claim with a state. This is of course, this is the big paradox today that you see also in the European Union. Uh, the people of Greece voted against the uh, Troika measures, but at the end it doesn't matter doesn't because matter. there is no national sovereignty in the European Union, yeah. in essence, if yeah. you're not a rich country. Yeah. And if you're a rich country, you can separate like the, like the English are trying to do. So, um, so, I, so I don't think that organization is necessarily the same as, uh, as, uh, as being a state. Uh, and of course, the parliament as, an, as a structure comes with the history of the state, the history of the Athenian city-state, but that of course is also, that is historically a different model than what we know today as the nation-state. And, uh, and in the whole history of humankind, we have um, engaged in assemblies. And at the end, the parliament is nothing else but an assembly. It is a gathering of people that try to uh, gain uh, knowledge from the commons. So there's a conviction that it is not a, sing a single person who can uh, make a decision for a collective, but that there is always a, 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 a better knowledge that comes from a larger group of people, like there's a kind of common knowledge that comes as a result of that. Um, when we transport it... So I think you can have a parliament without a state. But, uh, but, uh, okay, okay, that's true. That's <laughs> Sorry, true. that was that, my point. No, 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 that's, that's like very clear. Very, uh, no, but um, to, take the, um, uh, to take the step towards um, the, artistic affect, the artistic level, the artistic, um, it's interesting that both of you are, are artists, but taking a very... Uh, interesting step into in terms of being a um, let's say an engaged uh, person more than an artist making art in a way. Um, what could you say about art itself and development? If you are talking about this, how do you see art itself? You are referring for the art market, to, but how do you see art as itself when you are working in this way, looking for new ways, but also about yourself? But do you, you, in the question, you seem to separate the idea that you can be that being engaged makes you less of an artist? Probably, or just, or just more. But what is your, what is your, what is your personal opinion about it? I mean, my personal opinion is that um, the history of art is also a history of politics. In the European context, um, we speak of uh, art's autonomy or the autonomy of art, but that autonomy is completely. Uh, dependent on a revolutionary moment, the moment of the French Revolution, in which artists massively joined, 
um, to declare the year one of the new republic because they believed that they could be freed from the change of the chains of the aristocracy and make an art that would be part of the common good. Mm -hmm. So today we speak of political, of artistic autonomy as if that separates art from politics. But to get to that moment, we needed a revolution to separate, to separate. that in the first place. Yeah. So I think that, that these two are, are historically intertwined. Uh, it, although we have come to a point in time in which we tend to institutionally separate them, and I think that's a mistake. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and it, uh, artists who, who was always in this uh, complexity, as you, you described, Jonas, the, uh, the, um, we have to deal with, with that uh, complexity and uh, even to make it even more complex and to, to uh, yeah, and to, 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 to move on and move, move further. Yeah. Yeah, but makes it also, you know, on the based on reflection, you know, the meaning of it, you know, meaning of art, but also art and its context. As I, for that reason, for me, it's interesting to be here in the table as a, an interview mm -hmm. as a museum director, because um, tomorrow you speak with someone who is literally related to making things um, otherwise, you know, other than mm -hmm. uh, uh, organizing things. So that's a, that's a, there's something in a difference between that. So for my, that's all my, my interest is, so what, what happened, what's happening with, with art and the opinion on it? So you have your opinion on it and you are turning about at something of a misunderstanding now. Um, but how do you, but how do you, um, let because you, part of your, part of your world is also an academy. You also, you, you want to have something educated. I mean, yes, that together with Bach, Bas, Fakhtar, Kunz, we founded also a school, the New World Academy, which is part of the organization New World Summit that yeah. built this, this uh, parliament together with the Autonomous Kurdish region. And, and the academy is focused on trying to, um, uh, let's say, trying to propose alternative histories of arts, but from the perspective of political struggle. So to give a very concrete example, the Kurds as a peoples um, are divided over four states. Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey. And they are one of the largest nations in the world without uh, a state. And in the history of the Kurdish struggle for independence, for autonomy, which they're now trying to create in the northern part of Syria, mm -hmm. the role of art has always been incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So the role of um, poetry, the role of theater, mm -hmm. the role of literature, because the very, even the Kurdish language itself was forbidden. So even if you would, if you would um, speak out a poem in Kurdish, even if it was not a political poem explicitly, it was already a political act to speak Kurdish. So the history of the Kurdish people for a very long time didn't have a state, but it did have art. And it traveled throughout history through art by uh, speaking the language in clandestine, by teaching through literature, through art, through poetry, from one generation or another, that there was a people that are called the Kurds, that they have a history mm -hmm. that goes back over 5,000 years, mm -hmm. that there was something called ancient Mesopotamia, that there were ancient um, um, uh, leading figures and women in society, and all of these symbols traveled through art. So I, I think that the, the way, that the fact that we have somehow come to, to separate art and culture, I think is, is false, our idea and our collective um, uh, identity uh, travels through culture much more through the states that claim that culture as theirs. In a way, in, in my words, you, um, you act as if you are a kind of a visual maker. <coughs> a visual maker. Some things are happening, you are looking beneath, and your, your, the quality, your quality is to put that uh, on, on the table. To put, you know, if you're talking about your example, uh, uh, forbidding language, uh, but you have poems or even music um, which performs uh, identity, your background, and you put it on the table, you put it forward, you make it visual. So um, that's my, in my words, that, that you are kind of a visual maker, so things are happening, but not seen, but they are known. And if right. you put, uh, you know, so this is also a part of that, a part of that artistic, artistic uh, universe that Jonas Stahl is. Well, I don't know if, if that is necessarily if that is necessarily me, but let's say that um, I think with a new political vision, like for example, the Kurds claim their independent historical historical part of Kurdistan back, declare it autonomous, but they don't declare it a state. They call it a stateless democracy. This is a new kind of political vision. The idea that it's not centralized state mechanisms, but local uh, assemblies that this, that make political decisions. This is for me an imagination. 
it imagines the world in a very different way. Like it challenges our current understanding of the world divided through national borders, national identities, etc. And that allows also for a new artistic imagination. When they commissioned us to make this parliament, um, we came up with the idea of a public parliament, which is a new thing in the sense that the idea that a parliament is also a public space. So I think this is a kind of art that can only come because of this revolutionary moment. And at the same time, it's an art that also contributes to it. Because through the parliament, through this new form, we also again. look again mm -hmm. at politics. Yeah. So for me, it's about. I'm not. Uh, for me, it's not that politics and art are the same, but they are continuously interrelated. And in the case of uh, new progressive emancipatory forms of politics, it opens new ways of art, and these new ways of art also open new ways of thinking, thinking, thinking. and practicing politics. Yes. 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 Um, yeah. and new yeah. ways. Of, yeah. And your your work and especially this this project is a very nice example for for these very very rare moments when you know like these revolutionary uh, moments can intervene with uh, with art. It's, it's very uh, very rare moments in you know like even in recent history. Yes. Yeah. True. And, and then still, I mean, the same way that you speak about your partiture as sculpture, I mean, I also speak about this parliament as sculpture. Mm -hmm. It as a sculpture, it yeah. also, and as an ideological <laughs> planetarium, it represents also, a, it, it represents, a, it proposes an imaginary, like it is also an object. Um, but at the same time, it's also a place where you, where you practice, the, where you practice the ideas represented by the object, if you understand what I mean. Yes, like the yeah. parliament is a yeah. kind of, it proposes an idea, in a visual means, you, you can engage with it as such, but its true completion comes when it is being used, yeah. when what it represents and how you can use it happen at the same time. Yeah. So, but it doesn't negate the fact that you can still speak about it as art, but you can no longer negate the political dimension from art. This for me is very important. That's true. Next step, Jonas, what's your next step? Finishing the parliament. Finishing the parliament. Yeah. And then it's for you, then it's also you know, making a point in a way that you take a next step in a new work or new works, or is it something for you This is just the beginning of much more? Well, what's of course important about this parliament is that it's a parliament that has executive power, yeah. which is something that has never happened before, before right. in, the, in the temporal parliaments that we created, because True. there were more yeah. like international summits. And in this case, it is an actual parliament, although for a political model, it's very different than what we normally use our parliaments uh, for. Uh, now our main responsibility is to uh, finish the parliament, to finish the surrounding park, to make sure that there's a, that the infrastructure that we promised is going to be delivered. It's financed half by the autonomous government, the other half comes from my own organization. Mm -hmm. And once it is finished, it will be inaugurated and officially handed over to the local uh, communes. Um, for me, the next step, and this may be something that we can yeah. discuss together as well, um, is uh, how to translate um, this kind of alternative political visions of a new model of democracy to the current exactly. European yeah. crisis that we're facing. Okay. I mean, the struggle in Syria is one that's very, uh, the, the, of the Kurds is one that's very evident. It's a struggle between the, the Kurds, their new model of democracy, the Turkish regime that is turning more and more authoritarian, the Islamic State, while well, we don't have to explain why they are opponents. Um, in the context of the European Union, our, the, let's say the front lines at this moment are less clear. And I think we, we need also uh, the imaginary of art to make clear what our front lines are. Like what, what are the choices that we're currently facing and what is, a, what is the alternative union that we could um, struggle for. Yeah. Uh, something that is neither the ultranationalist and fascist alliances that are now um, swarming throughout, uh, throughout the, the continent uh, and neither the kind of autocratic, undemocratic uh, mechanisms from Eurogroup to the, to the Troika and uh, that are making decisions outside of our own capacity as civil society. So what is the, the third way, and not the third way of the 90s, but the real, the real. Uh, third way? Next step? Yeah, actually, you know, like I, I, Joining I, I do. Joining me in this struggle. No, 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 I, no, no, no definitely, you know, like, so I, uh, even if we, uh, we have stopped, you know, like Societe Realist uh, uh, one and a half year, year ago, I, I do continue my, my work the, uh, the, uh, the last year and this year as well. I, I continue to work a lot in Hungary mm -hmm. right now, especially because of these kind of problems. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, it's more like there is no any revolution moments right now there, but uh, there are you know, like uh, some territories still to, uh, you know, to, uh, to describe as a potentially uh, revolutionary platforms, let's mm. say. Yeah, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit because it's right now it's, it's very, very uh, low profile uh, moment that we uh, people live there. So, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I mean, I, I think it's, 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 it's very important to work on, the, on, these, uh, on these front lines. But first of all, we have to, uh, we have to see that it's very difficult when we, uh, when we speak about, you, you mentioned like France, uh, Poland, Hungary and Greece, that even the, uh, the uh, vocabulary that we use to describe very simple situations uh, doesn't work in one no. context from another. So like uh, very simple uh, political, con I mean like words, uh, concepts uh, like communism, liberalism, etc. doesn't mean the same thing no. in, in Western Europe or in Central Europe yeah. or, or, um, in the, uh, or even in, in, in Greece. Greece is even much more closer to Western Europe actually. Mm. So or the, with that, you know, like to work with this kind of vocabulary is very hard and uh, to, to force it. You have to be sometimes more subtle, more like you know, yourself low profile to, to arrive to, sub, uh, to, to, to make some movements mm -hmm. in these, uh, uh, you know, like floppy grounds. Mm. And, but I think that also, that actually touches also on, on the, key, the key question of what is, should we even still speak of Europe? Should we simply speak about a union between, let's say, the, between the, what we now consider as different member states? How do we simultaneously recognize the fact that each of the member states do have very, very, and, and non-member states from the Basque country to Catalonia to Ireland, etc., Northern Ireland, um, but they do have very particular histories, uh, languages, cultural symbols that have to be recognized. Uh, and at the same time, our struggle is, how do we confront the common crisis that we're facing at the same time? So how do you come to an imaginary of a new union in the context of Europe that recognizes those at the same time? The right to, let's say, local, cultural, political self-determination and at the same time confronting the common crisis we have, the political, economic, humanitarian crisis we're facing. And I think this is the, I mean, from, for me personally, this is the main challenge that yeah. we're facing now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I guess, I mean, and for us, then the question is always, what is the role of art at this um, yet to imagine front line yep. between the old Europe and what comes after. A beautiful question also to, to end this conversation um, and to, to invite you, um, if you have any questions or remarks, uh, please let us know. We have our hand out there and so, no? I thought you all would be warmed up. And you just have to allow a very challenge. long, awkward silence. And <laughs> <laughs> that is the art. That is the art. No? It's not long enough. Not long enough? But maybe I'm, I'm, um, I can continue because I had lots of questions. Uh, but um, out of the fact was I was very curious about yourselves, you know, about you as artists, and um, I was, you know, preparing this conversation. I was thinking about all kinds of, of artists like Boyce, and but also Erich Wichmann, which you like, and you very very much. Um, we have in our collection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I didn't want to make uh, a literal reference to it, you know, because mm -hmm. this is, in my experience, something completely new. But um, but also um, uh, the performance and the meaning of museums. Um, you know, and the performance and, and, and the meaning of presentation spaces, etc. Um, because I think, um, um, <laughs> regarding my own regarding my own position, I think there's something also happening. If you take this in a larger scale, as you are mirroring it, um, we need to rethink um, all kinds of aspects related to art and artists and, and artworks. So you rethink collections, you rethink museums, you rethink... I think one of my colleagues does that on a very, very high level. That's Charles Eschy in the, in the Van Abbe Museum. Um, but in fact, it's, it's, a much, it's, it's the beginning of a much larger yeah, movement. Not a movement in a, in a, in a way, a political movement, but we, a movement in thinking, I think. 
I think that's the per perfect final. That's the perfect final. <laughs> Should we leave it on that? Yes. <laughs> Should we I think it's a very beautiful conclusion, actually, rather actually, than a question. No, but also, I, mean, I think, uh, just to, if I may, uh, Maria, uh, uh, to explain to the audience that a few years ago when we were talking about the cooperation with Buck and it had to do also with the first we were thinking about exhibitions, etc. But we were literally, you were more thinking in the cliches, in the stereotyping of uh, making exhibitions, etc., etc. But how to get deeper? And that was also the background of the fact that Jonas, uh, in cooperation with Bach, had an exhibition last year, in 15 in the museum, and we acquiring it. And Maria stated then the, a few years ago if you have new ideas on art, you have to have new ideas on collection and on uh, collecting. Uh, so you have also new interpretations, as he called it as future vocabulary and future collection. And um, it's interesting to share with you that I'm now writing the motivation for the Mondrian Fund about these efforts we did of the last year. And it was so interesting to, to, to rethink um, uh, what happened when we literally acquired uh, the work uh, of Jonas, um, but also in how to act on it uh, literally if you want to show it again and in which, con when, in which context and uh, what is happening then, etc., etc. So, and I found it really, really one of the most exciting but also really existential aspects of uh, the last few years in literally thinking about its meaning of being an institute that preserves, uh, that, that acquires. And I think it was also the quality of our cooperation to do that rethinking. Hmm. No. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much for coming, listening. Um, you're a very kind and, uh, audience. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you are. And thank you very much for thank your you. vote. And um, I'm very proud to have you here this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.